Alright, hello and welcome back to the video. This is the video for Info 4325 Graphic Design Tutorial 3. And in this video, we are going to be looking at how to create a liquid motion effect that works on a path inside of After Effects. Okay, so first things first, make sure you have your Adobe After Effects opened. And as usual, let's now create a new composition. So click on the new composition or Control N on your keyboard to create a new composition. And just name your composition to like Main Comp or Liquid Motion Comp. So I'm just going to rename it to Liquid Motion Comp. Okay, make sure to have your settings selected. I am using 1920 by 1080 at 24 frames per second and at 10 seconds. Okay, once you have that, click OK to create your composition. And the first thing that we are going to do is we are going to be creating a background for the composition using solids. To do that, go to the Layer tab up here, hit New and select Solid. Or your shortcut key should be Control y Rename your solid to whatever you want. I'm going. I'm just going to rename it as background or BG for short. Click on make comp size and you can choose whatever color that you want for your background. I'm just going to be using a dark blue, some kind of dark blue color or dark purple color if you want and hit OK to create your solid. The next thing you are going to do is we are going to be creating a shape layer using the pen tool. Click on the pen tool up here your shortcut key should be G, okay, with the pen tool selected. Make sure that nothing is selected. Please deselect everything on your timeline. Make sure to remove all fill colors. So you can just hit Alt on your keyboard, okay, hit Alt on your keyboard and select on the fill color to cycle through all the colors. Make sure you remove all fill colors. So no fill color. And you can change the stroke color later, but for now, I'm just going to have no fill and no stroke color. What you want to do now is to simply create a path using the pen tool. So click and drag on your canvas to create a point like that. Create a second point that looks like a path. Make sure it's a curved path like so. Make sure to click and drag on the pen tool to create curves in your path so that your animation later will be a lot more smoother. Okay, once you have a path that looks something like this or whatever shape that you like, the next thing we are going to do is we are going to be changing the stroke color for the path. So with this shape layer selected or this path, it is a shape layer, make sure it is selected. Go to the stroke color here simply select a stroke color that you want. For me, I'm just going to be using a gradient, a linear gradient for your stroke color. So to cycle between colors, again, hit Alt on your keyboard. Okay, make sure you hit Alt on your keyboard and click on the stroke color to cycle between colors until you find the stroke color that you want. I'm just going to be using a linear gradient. So this is the gradient color. So make sure to have gradient selected for your stroke color. And then I want you to change the stroke width up here from 30 to something like 70 or 80. Maybe 80 for me. Okay, you should have something that looks like this. Now, what you want to do is to just simply change your stroke color. So go down to the layers panel here. Select your shape layer. Make sure to click on, make sure to click on this drop down menu. Find the gradient stroke over here. Click the drop down menu for the gradient stroke and find colors and select edit gradient. Okay, over here, you can simply select and change the stroke color to whatever color that you want. I'm just going to have this color transition to this some kind of green color over here. Okay, play around until you get the colors that you want. Once done, select OK. Now let's change the position of the gradient over here. Go to the selection tool. Make sure your shape layer is selected and make sure your gradient stroke is selected down here. With the selection tool, you should see these two points over here. 
So if you click and drag these points over here, you can see that it moves your gradient color. So just play around with the points until you get a smooth gradient color. Once you have something like that, something that you are already satisfied with and something that you like, the next thing we are going to do is we are going to be animating this stroke over here. So go back to the shape layer down here. Okay, go back to the shape layer here. Select add. Click on add and add trim paths. Okay, the trim path menu should be down here. So click on the trim path option down here. And like the previous tutorial video or the previous class, I'm sure that everyone knows how to use the trim path option by now. What you want to do is to go to the start option here. Make sure to make sure your playhead is on zero seconds. Okay. And select the stopwatch for the start and the end value. And make sure to change the value for start and end to 0%. Like so. Make sure to change the value to 0% for the start and the end. And make sure to have a keyframe at the beginning of the video or the timeline at 0 seconds. Now drag your playhead down to somewhere around 2 seconds or maybe a little bit over 2 seconds. You can change it to however long you want, okay, whatever duration that you want. Once you have that, change the start and the end value back to 100%. So 100 for the start, 100 for the end. Once you have that, next thing you are going to do is to click on the start property here. Okay, make sure to have these two keyframes for the start selected. Once these two keyframes are selected, simply click and drag and move it just further down the timeline until you can see your stroke. Okay, I'm just going to set it something that looks like that. If you try to play your stroke now, it should look like this. Okay, once you have that, don't forget to select all the keyframes and hit F9 on your keyboard to easy ease the keyframes. Like so. What you want to do now is to go to the shape layer one here. Okay, go to the shape layer here. Click on gradient stroke. Make sure you have the drop down for gradient stroke open. And then the next thing you are going to do is to find the line cap over here. Okay, find the line cap. Change it from butt cap to round cap. Once you have that, go all the way down until you find the taper option here. Click on the drop down for the taper option. What you want to do is you are just going to change the start length to somewhere around 75 to 80%. So I'm just going to put in 75 for the start length and the end length, change it to 100%. Okay. Once you have that, go down to end width over here and change it to 100%. Like so. If you see now, if you try to play your animation, you should see something that looks like a droplet of water. Once you have that, we are going to be animating one property under the taper option, which is the end width over here. So to animate this, go down your timeline somewhere around here. Just before your animation ends, Okay, somewhere around here, just before your animation ends. And then hit the stopwatch icon for the end width of the stroke. Go down the timeline right before your animation ends. Okay, if you can see, this is my keyframe for the end of the animation. So I'm just going to bring it right before the animation ends over here, like so. And then change the end width to 0%. Okay, so you should have something that looks like this on your timeline. And again, don't forget to highlight your keyframes and hit F9 on your keyboard to easy ease the keyframes. If you try to play the animation, the liquid motion will smoothly disappear once it reaches its end. Okay, so that's the purpose of using the keyframes for the end width of the stroke. So again, if you play this animation, you should have something that looks like this. The final thing that you might want to do to make this animation a little bit more smooth is to use the motion blur effect. 
So to toggle motion blur, simply click on the motion blur icon over here and make sure to enable motion blur for shape layer 1. So enable motion blur. Now if you try to play your animation, it will look a little bit smoother compared to before you enable the motion blur effect. So from here, you can go a little bit further by creating multiple water droplets and even splashes inside of your project like the sample video that I've shown using the exact same process, the exact same step when you create this animation here. So by now, I hope that you can understand a little bit on the processes and the concepts of creating liquid motion effect using the pen tool and path inside of After Effects. If you have any problems and if you don't understand anything, please do not hesitate to ask. That's it from me in this video and I will see you in the next tutorial class and video. Thank you.